Hi, hope you're having a great Diwali. Happy Diwali to everyone. Uh, today I want to talk about piles and hemorrhoids. Now this is an issue that plagues thousands and thousands of people across our country and even across different parts of the world. Now we have to understand that piles and hemorrhoids, this is nothing but basically connective tissues or basically your veins which are swollen and now you can have internal piles or you can have external piles. Internal is when it stays in the anus and the, rectus, the rectal area and external is when it comes and protrudes out of your rectal area and your anus. Now usually most people resort to surgery, it's a quick surgery, but we need to understand that in any point of our life, surgery should be the last option Okay, I'm not against surgery, but if it's needed, it should be done. Now, why I'm against making surgery the last, why I'm for making surgery the last option when it comes to piles and hemorrhoids is because we've seen so many people who have gone through pile surgeries and hemorrhoid surgeries and they get the same problem over and over again. Because you see, you see surgery is only taking care of the problem at a symptomatic level. We need to get to the root cause and find out why am I even growing piles and hemorrhoids in the first place. And usually there are two very, very strong reasons why. So rather than going through surgery and not making a lifestyle change that addresses the root cause, we'll keep on getting piles and hemorrhoids and we'll have to keep on going through these surgeries. So number one, if you need a surgery, like I said, take it. But number one, if you've been detected with piles and hemorrhoids, allow, your, allow yourself some time to make lifestyle changes, which we're gonna talk about, to see if it reduces. And if it reduces, you don't have to go through that surgery. Because like I said, you cut it off and then you don't change your lifestyle, you'll get the piles and hemorrhoids again and again and again. How many surgeries are you gonna do? So now basically the symptoms that come along with piles and hemorrhoids is basically itching, then you have rectal bleeding, and sometimes you have a lot of pain or difficulty passing stools. Now, one of the most common reasons why people develop piles and hemorrhoids is because they strain to push out their stool, which means, number one, they are constipated. Number two, they push, they strain to push this out. Now, when you strain, these veins and connective tissues in your anal area basically get swollen because it's pressure that you're putting on it. And then soon, sooner or later, that becomes a pile or a hemorrhoid. So the number one thing to do is ask yourself, are you straining to push out your stool? So a lot of people are in a hurry to, ab to evacuate in the morning and we also rush our children to evacuate quickly. This will cause them to strain and strain harder. So number one, the first thing is if you're straining, you need to stop that. If you're straining, your body's trying to tell you that you're constipated. And if you're constipated, we've done several videos which we'll post in this thread right after this. But number one is your water intake. If you have a low water intake, your stool will be hard. If your stool is hard, you need to strain to push it out. But when your stool absorbs water, that forms the bulk and volume of your stool and it can easily exit your body without any push or any strain. That's how you prevent piles and hemorrhoids. Now, another reason why we get piles and hemorrhoids, certain people who lift very, very heavy objects or heavy weights the wrong way. So they put a lot of strain, they basically contract the anus completely and that puts pressure on these veins and connective tissues in the rectal area. So that's a small population for most people, piles and hemorrhoids, it is constipation and it is straining and trying very hard to push out your stool. So if your root causes constipation, that's what you gotta be working with. You should try to avoid the surgery and address the root cause as far as possible, but finally it's left to your doctor to decide what is right for you and your condition at that period of time. So number one, we have to understand that we have a puborectalis muscle. Now when this muscle is contracted, that's how we can pass out a stool. So you see in the olden days, especially in India, we used the Indian toilets where you had to squat down and poop. So when you were in a squat position, your puborectalis muscle automatically got contracted and you easily pushed out a stool. Now most of us use Western toilets today and that's still not a problem. So if you use a foot stool where you put your legs up on a stool, your knees lift closer towards your abdomen and it contracts and puts pressure on your puborectalis muscle. Now if you don't have a foot stool, all you need to do is bend down. So you automatically contract your puborectalis muscle and you pass out your stool without having to strain. Now we need to understand that a lot of people are on medication and some medications cause constipation. So we gotta be aware of that as well. A lot of people resort to stool softeners and laxatives. Now if you need it, take it, but don't make a lifetime habit out of this because after a while you become so dependent on this that you cannot do without it. And then how a laxative works is it basically pushes out everything, the good and bad, out of your colon. So we have a natural powder which is called Trifla. Trifla is an Ayurvedic powder which 
you can buy in pharmacies and basically they're certified so you make sure that you're getting the right ingredients without heavy metals. Trifla works as a great natural laxative. So basically you can use this as a stool softener in case you're very, very constipated. But the idea is to get to the root cause. And like I said, the root cause usually revolves around lack of water, lack of fiber, sometimes too much of fiber. And of course, if you're on certain kinds of medication, like people going through chemo, radiation and heavy medication may find themselves constipated. Now, if you do have piles and hemorrhoids, it's very painful at times. So what can ease the pain is an Epsom salt hot water bath. You have a bathtub, great, you don't, you have a bucket, you fill it with warm water, you put about 100 to 200 grams of Epsom salt, that's magnesium sulfate, in that water, and you basically lower your anus into that water, and that basically relieves you of that pain, and it reduces the inflammation as well. You can use aloe vera gel as well. Now you wanna get, because there are different strains of aloe vera, you wanna get the aloe vera, which is used for cosmetic or oral use. You can get that in pharmacies or certain shops, and you can apply that orally in the area that you have piles or your hemorrhoids, and that will give you relief. It's very cooling as well. Your doctor may prescribe over-the-counter ointments, which also help you reduce the inflammation and the pain, so you can do that as well. Now if you use toilet paper and you have hemorrhoids and piles, you need to understand that you will aggravate your condition because you're using dry paper on something which is basically inflamed. So you may want to move on to wet wipes or preferably what's best is using water to wash yourself. Okay, so now castor oil, we've spoken about this as well, can also help you to soften your stools and pass it out easily the next morning without straining. So you have like a teaspoon or you have a tablespoon depending on your age of castor oil just before you sleep at night and this will help you have a better bowel movement in the morning. And it's that simple when it comes to piles. The way people are gonna sell it to you, hey, it's a simple surgery, you're in and out the same day and all of that stuff, but you are not addressing the root cause. You wanna make sure there are people who have even external piles and hemorrhoids, but by changing their lifestyle, by not straining anymore and solving their gut issues and constipation, they can completely 100% reverse the piles and the hemorrhoids. So it's honestly poor lifestyle that causes it and it's good lifestyle that's gonna reverse it. So you wanna keep surgery as your last option and make your lifestyle changes that revolves around your constipation, your fiber intake, your water intake, and of course, eating clean food. If you're constantly eating oily food and deep fried food, guess what? It's gonna make your piles and hemorrhoids worse. So you have a balanced diet that contains your fruits, your vegetables, your raws, your nuts, your seeds, and a little bit of your cooked food. That's what a balanced diet does for you. It maintains the health of your bowels and your colon and your gut, which is the most important part of the most important system of your entire human body. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the rest of Diwali. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.